you doing? This is Rich from How To With Rich. And today I'm going to show you how to remove vinyl fence posts that have been planted in concrete. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, my vinyl fence post is broken. How in the world do I get all that concrete out? Well, it can be a real bitch. But I'm going to show you a fairly easy way to get it out. And then I'm going to show you exactly how to put it back together so you don't wind up using six bags of concrete. And I'm going to show you what tools you need. I'm going to be removing two fence posts today, removing the concrete and the post. And it'll probably take a couple hours, one hour a piece, I'm guessing. Here or take. Uh, show you all the tools you need. For example, you're just going to need some of the basics. Shovel, a rake, a fence post hole digger, and that rod right there is called a San Angelo bar. And this particular one is it's either 16 or 18 pounds. It really doesn't matter as long as it's got a sharp tip on one end and a spade tip on the other. And you're going to need some sort of a sturdy box to use as a fulcrum point, just like that. And of course, some of the other normal tools good pair of leather gloves, a wheelbarrow to hold some of the dirt. And I've got a, a ditch spade and a small hand spade there just in the event I need those. So what do you say we get to it? Let me show you how to get this post out of the ground. First thing we'll do is take a look at two of the posts that have gone bad. You can see one here is already out of the ground and take a close look at the size of the hole. If we try to put a new post in there and fill it up with concrete, we would wind up with, I don't know, five, six bags of concrete. Here's one of the other posts that went bad. You can see the repair I tried to do. It was a good try. Good thought. Didn't work with a darn. And here are the repairs that I did on the other post. This post was broken a whole lot worse. So... Therein lies the reason we're replacing these two posts. First thing we want to do is try to level out the surface around the post so that we're working with what we call grade. Try to make sure that everything is at grade level. Now I'm just going to level this out a little bit before I grab a shovel. And once it's level enough, I'll grab the shovel and dig down to the top of the concrete. Not only does this give me an idea where the top of the concrete is but how far out the concrete goes from the post that way I know exactly where to start putting my secondary post hole and I do mean post hole because it's going to be used to get this old concrete post out of the ground now you notice I'll come in with a post hole digger and I will put a post hole right directly adjacent to the concrete Dig this down to as close as you can to the bottom of the existing concrete. And then once you get the hole down as far as the bottom of the concrete, widen it out a little bit. Just make it about as wide as the concrete itself. And yeah, you might have to use that San Angelo bar just to make that hole go a little deeper into the ground. In this particular case, the dirt was pretty wet, but it's also been compacted for many years, so... Use what you have to use. And then follow up by using the post hole digger again just to get all of the debris out of the hole all the way down to the bottom of the concrete. And then as soon as you're happy with having all the dirt out of the hole and the hole looks like it's straight up and down, this is the fun part. Walk over to the other side, give it a shove. There you go. See the way the post fell over into that post hole we just created? That's the best way to get it loose. And remember when I was showing you the tools you would need for this project? I pointed out that box. Well, this particular box is just two by fours with three quarter inch plywood on it, good and solid. And I'm using the hole in the bottom of the post where the rails go as my lifting point. If your post doesn't have rails, you may have to drill a hole to get the rod through the post and then just lift you're going to want to be careful, though, that the post doesn't try to slide back down into the hole, like that. It could break a wrist. Just be very, very cautious. There you go. See, it fell back down into the hole. I'm supposed to be the expert. 
I'll show you how to do it right here. Hang on. Put the rod through. Get a good grip on the wood. Lift it up. And see the way the see the way the rod is stuck into the the wood? Then what I do is I just turn it. There you go. Now it won't drop back down inside the hole. Voila! Post hole out of the ground. And you know, I spent years trying to figure out how to get 300 pounds worth of concrete out of the ground without going out and buying five or six hundred dollars worth of special tools. I figured this out with a wooden box and a $25 steel rod that I picked up at Lowe's and it works beautifully. So here I'm going to grab the camera, take it over and I'm going to show you what the inside of these holes look like one more time. So we need to clean this hole out and get it ready for our sleeve. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. That's one of the tools I did not show you at the beginning. And here it is. It's a cardboard tube made by Sacrete. It's 10 inches in diameter and it's called a form tube. You'll see how we're going to use it as a form. So yesterday when I wound up at the end of the day I covered the holes so the neighbors wouldn't fall into the hole and then the wind blew everything down. So now it's time to move everything out of the way and start doing our layout. And if you hadn't noticed, I'm using 5-inch vinyl posts. And on a 5-inch vinyl post vinyl system, the measurement is 97 inches center to center or edge to edge. And in this case, I've got 97 inches figured right out to that stake that I have laid on its edge so that I have an idea. Now what I want to do is I want to find out the depth of my hole, make sure I'm not too deep, not too shallow. So... Let's make sure that we're okay depth-wise. Looks pretty good to start with. And some more fun starts here. We get to put the concrete form into the hole. And of course, you're going to want to make sure you've got this lined up so that the post is going to be center to center 97 inches, not edge to edge. Or you'll be digging your dirt out again. <laughs> Okay, now when you feel comfortable that the form is in the spot that it needs to be so that your post will be center to center, 97 inches, then you can start dropping dirt in around the form. One thing you're going to want to make sure you have is some sort of a stick or a post or something that you can compact the dirt. You see, I'm, what I'm using is a 4x4 four four post that has a little notch cut out of it because it used to be a fence post on a deck. And I just take dirt, put no more than two inches in at a time, and compact that two inch layer of dirt down along the bottom of the hole, right up next to the concrete form. There you go. See, I put in no more than two inches of dirt, and then compact it. Because if you don't compact it, it's going to fall right back into the hole when you pull the concrete form out. And if you've got an area that's just a little bit too narrow for a 4x4, or if you want to get real tight to your concrete form, you see what I'm using there is just a piece of half-inch plywood. And then I move the form around and pull it up just a few inches. Because I don't want it stuck down in a three-foot hole and then try to pull it out when it's being held in by three feet of compacted dirt. Pull the form up slowly as you work your way up. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the bottom rail and I'm going to lay the bottom rail out there just to make sure that I have a pretty good dimension between posts before I go too much farther. Once again, I don't want to have to dig all that dirt out of the hole. So what we'll do now is we'll take the bottom rail and just kind of get an idea and make sure we're on track. Next thing we're going to do is put the post inside the form and measure in between both posts up at the top rail and make sure we're just on track. See how the post is right smack dab in the middle of the form? And if you're happy with the way the post looks inside the form and the measurements look good with the other post, you're ready to move on to bringing that dirt level up to grade. Remember, no more than two inches at a time before you compact it. And when you're happy with the compaction, be sure to move the form up a few inches. You'll be sorry if you don't. 
Okay, once you're happy with the level of dirt that you've compacted into the hole, you want to get some sort of a guide that you can put across the grade and check your depth. You want to be about four inches down below grade for concrete. So in this particular case, I didn't have quite enough. I came up too high with the dirt, so I'm going to take a little bit out. But about four inches is perfect. And once I've gotten the dirt out, go ahead and take my guide, look again, make sure I've got four inches. If I'm in good shape, go ahead and gently work the tube out of the hole, being careful not to bust it loose and allowing it to slide down into the hole. Before we move any further, we want to make sure our dimensions are good, so we very carefully slide the post into the hole. Don't want to knock the sides of the hole down into the hole. And then take the guide and make sure that our rail is about the correct level above grade. And it looks like it's real close. We want to be about an inch to an inch and a half above grade for that lower rail. And then very carefully pull the post out of the hole and set it aside for a while. What do you say we take a look at this perfect hole? Now, is that a post hole or is that a post hole? Obviously, I've done both post holes. Didn't have to show you how to do two of them. If you look closely there, you can see that indentation around the hole. That's that four inches below grade so that we can put dirt above the concrete so we can plant grass or have decorative gravel or something around there without having concrete. Let's mix some concrete. I've already got an awful lot of the concrete poured on this first post. Be sure to double check all your measurements before you start pouring concrete because once you've got concrete in that hole, it becomes very, very difficult to move the post. Got my son helping me there, moisturizing the sackcrete mix. Two sacks per hole. Once you've got your sackcrete all mixed up properly, very carefully put some down in the hole. And a very important part of the concrete for me is taking a stick and then mixing the concrete in the hole, making sure it's very well compacted into the hole and mixed well. That way it'll become very, very snug inside that hole we just created. And once we're sure that the concrete is all mixed up well and nice and tight in the hole, one last check just to make sure that the post is straight up and down. So I've got that polycast level taped to the post. Once again, this is not a video on how to put in posts, rather the post holes. And I'm kind of anal about things, so I like to double check and make sure that my post lines are nice and straight and level. And as you can see here, not too shabby for an old guy in a cold, windy day. Well, if you want to take a tip from your Uncle Rich, do not try to replace fence posts when it's 33 degrees and a wind chill factor of about eight. Uh, I don't know if you can notice or not, but the wind is blowing here. Oh, God. It's coming from that direction, I mean, which is towards the east. As you can see, behind me, the pair of the fence is going well in spite of this freaking wind that we have. I should have the fence put back together. Well, probably tomorrow. I don't want to put all the pieces back together until after. So, until after the concrete sets. You see the concrete in that first post. It's all done. By the way, we're ready to pour concrete in this next hole. And just like it were, just like if it was a, uh, a wooden post, I put the post in the hole and then I put the concrete around it. And there's no concrete on the inside of the post. Okay, hole number two, it's concrete. 